Welcome back guys, it's thrift flip time. I am so excited to be sharing with you guys my first thrift haul. This is something I'm pretty passionate about. Um, I think it's just in my blood. My family has a girls trip every year. It's a tradition in our family to go hit up all the flea markets and sales and things the weekend after Thanksgiving. Um, we love going to yard sales, Goodwills, I mean any kind of consignment shops. So this is something I've always loved to do, but I've never been able to do it on the scale. So I want to take you through my first haul, show you what all I have, and show you a few items that I'm gonna go ahead and flip. Have a couple of videos coming up for you to show you the rest of the items. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to begin, I have um, this cute wooden bowl, sorry it's full of stuff, um, that I picked up for $2. I also found this wooden candlestick which it's broken, so let me show you. hopefully it doesn't fall. Um, it was broken worse than this but I did push it down a little bit to make sure it didn't fall off completely on me, but I'm just going to fix this up. Um, I'm going to paint them up and then I am going to plan on connecting the two to make a cute little centerpiece um, for your table or wherever you want this to go. I think it's going to be super cute. I'm going to do it with the smaller one that I have too. So I have another candlestick that's just small. I'm going to put a base on it to make sure it stands and can stay level and then I'm going to attach this to the top and I think they're going to be super adorable. This was $3 total. This was $5 total. Let me put this out of the way. I have just this cute little hanging basket. Well, I say cute. The shape is really cute. This color and this sheen is a no for me, but it was $2 and I think that we can fix her up and make her look really adorable, give her some florals and get her a new home. I have these beautiful ceramic pitchers. So I have found no markings on this at all. So I don't think that it's anything um, that I should be worried about fixing up and, and painting at all. But I do plan to paint this, this beautiful detail. I think it's gorgeous. I love the shape of this. I love the size of this. So I think it was an awesome find. Like I said, I love the shape, the, the size of it, the detail of it. This was $4 and I think it's going to clean up and be beautiful when I'm done. I also found a mini pitcher. Super cute. Love the dramatic spout on it. Again, no markings on it at all. This one was $2, so I'm going to give it a little makeover as well love it. Um, I found this little, I think this is probably like resin. I don't know. It doesn't quite feel ceramic, but I don't know. This little wine carafe, um, I assume it was wine because it has the little grapes on it. Um, lovely detail on this piece. It says one liter here at the bottom. So I think once I give this a makeover, it'd be super cute. I mean, I would probably use it as a base because it's old and I don't know if you guys are new to thrifting or not, but they don't clean anything for you. Everything's grimy and disgusting, half the time broken, so you have to fix it up yourself. But I think that's going to turn out to be super cute and it can be used as a vase or whatever the person wishes to use it as. Um, next, I have uh, this old paper plate holder. It's just wooden, um, clearly outdated with the little hearts on it. I think that was probably big in like the 90s, I don't even know. But I am undecided on exactly how I'm going to make this over. I have several ideas running through my head, but one of them is to keep it as a paper plate holder um, and give it a matching touch as this. Um, this little, I don't know if it was like a little tool carrier, if it was to me with the paper plate holder, um, I could make a little set for napkins and then utensils on this side. Um, give it a cute, clean it up because it's pretty gross. Again, it's, you know, it, it is what you what it is. It was marked $6. I got it for $3. Um, it's in kind of rough shape, but I can clean it up. I can tighten it up. 
make it over, make it look super cute. So I could do it as like a picnic set. You have a paper plate holders, you have your um, napkins and utensil holders. You could put tools in here. You could put some florals over here and some your mail over here. There's just so many options for this cute little box. I'm very excited about that. Um, so that was $3. This was $2. I got this cute little old birdhouse. Um, you can tell it was handmade. It's old weathered wood. It's so gorgeous. Just check it out. I'm so excited about it. This was $3, but I think once I fix it up and give it a little bit of a makeover, it's going to be beautiful. I'm so excited about this little guy. I want him to move on and find another home because Again, when stuff lands in those thrift piles and stuff, it's stuff that people just threw out and didn't think was worth anything any longer. So I am excited to take this person's handmade creation, give it a little makeover, and send it on its way to another home. So I'm going to set this down here. I have these tin buckets. I have two of them. This one has beautiful detail stamped in and around the top. Um, I plan on redoing these little buckets. They can be used um, on tables or centerpieces. Uh, I'm probably going to stage it with some floral. And then same with this one. I'm just going to give it a makeover. It has a fun shape to it. Um, cute detail. It has a little riser feet on it. Um, this one was $3. This one was $2. Just cute little metal buckets that I'm going to give a makeover. Um, I have another floral box here. This one, I don't even know what this is. It doesn't sound like metal, maybe tin, plastic. I'm not really sure, but it has some beautiful detail on it. So I think I can really bring that out and make it pop with a little makeover, get rid of the yucky old stuff inside. This is $3. We'll get it cleaned up and ready for resale. This basket, look at this basket. Is that shape not adorable? Are you kidding me? It's such a good shape, it's such a good size. It does need, I'm going to have to um, fix up this handle a little bit because it's coming loose and coming undone. But I plan on keeping it pretty much as is, but I do wanna change the color of it. Um, so just stand by to be able to see that. This was $4. Look at the size, guys. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, I have these metal cars here, which I have looked up um, because they have Sexton stamped on the back. I have found these cars all over Facebook Marketplace, all over eBay. But you can, I've seen them start at the minimum. Um of the set of three for $25 and then go up from there. Um, all of those have been in pretty good condition, pretty pristine. Um, these I got for $2 each. I just think they're the coolest little things. Um, I love them, but they are beat up. They have dinks and scratches everywhere. All of the paint is peeling off of them. They just need some love and they are everywhere. So I'm not going to feel bad about giving these um, a little love and a makeover. I think they would look super cute hanging on somebody's wall. Um, but yeah, that's pretty beat up. Let me set this up here. This one, the chip, the paint is chipping off even more. Um, like I said, you can just see it's all chipping off and it's a loose paint too. So it's not, like if I touch this right here, it's just gonna start crumbling off. It's really loose. I just don't wanna mess, so I'm not going to do it. And then this one, Super cute, love the shape, but it has writing all over it. I think someone's kid or grandkid got a hold of it and wrote their name on it. I'm pretty sure it says Trent, so that's pretty cute. But yeah, so these are really cute. You can tell they're like pretty gross. Like there's some gross stuff on here that they need to be cleaned up really well and given some love so that we can redo them and send them on their way. I found these two matching trays. They're beautiful. They're awesome size. The small one was $2. The big one 
excuse me, was four dollars. Um, I plan on giving three to them and giving them a makeover. Oh my gosh, they're just, it was such an exciting find for me. I believe there's some kind of, I don't know the difference, so I apologize, but I think it's a Japanese print um, inside of it, but it's very faded and worn off and you can't see half of it anyway. So I'm going to give these a full makeover. Um, I will probably make them a matching set, but if somebody wants one and not the other, that's their prerogative. I don't mind separating them. But for the size and the shape, like I love the shape and that square shape that they have. I feel like most trays that you see are those longer rectangle ones. So I'm very excited about that. This shelving here, right here, is one of those foldables. So the top comes off, the shelves fold up, and then it folds in so that it's super easy for storage and for moving around. I'm so excited for this. I'm going to give it a makeover, but I'm going to keep it. This is gonna be for my personal stash, for my craft shows, for my craft room, whenever I need a little extra help, I can just throw it up off to the side, put the stuff I need on it on there and not have to worry about taking up any other room and then whenever I get things cleared out, break it back down and put it back away. So I'm so excited for that find. Oh. I had been looking for one of these. They're honestly not cheap um, for a good quality one and for the, the size that I got. So I am very excited to find that. And then last but not least, you guys, are you ready? It's probably going to show my mess in the background, but I don't even care. Look at these mirrors. Okay, I got two of them. I found a set of two. They were $10 each, but this thing, this is me standing up. Are you kidding me? It's like four foot tall. There's two of them. Okay. They have this beautiful arch at the top. There's a gorgeous detail at the top and then around it has some really good like beveled edges and stuff. When I paint these up and then give them a distressing, they are going to be absolutely gorgeous and I am so excited to see them. Um, these will definitely be a separate video because they will take up a little bit longer, but so excited about this. They have screws on the back so that I can easily take this back off and pop the mirror out and not have to have a whole bunch of fuss with it. I'm so excited about that. If you've ever done a mirror redo, like a, give it a, 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 what am I trying to say? If you've ever worked on a mirror, um, you know that one, if you can't get the mirror out, then paint, taping around everything and painting and making sure you don't mess up the mirror in the process or have any crusties or weirdness around the edges. So to be able to just take it apart, paint it up, put it back together, hopefully it'll be a breeze. Um, hopefully none of these screws are stripped out or anything, but there are two of them and they're big and they're beautiful. I am so excited to see how they turn out once we're done with them. So yeah, this is my first haul. I'm so excited about it, you guys. I love watching other people's thrift haul videos. I love taking old items and either just giving them a makeover and giving them a new life or taking them and completely making them into something else. Um, it's something I've always done, just on a smaller scale. So yes. I am more than excited to do this. I'm so excited to share it with you. So if you guys like these kind of videos, give me a like or a comment, something to let me know. Um, if you're new here, please consider hitting the subscribe button so that you can stay with me on this journey. Um, I love doing all of my other crafts too, so those videos won't be going away. I just wanted to work some of this into there um, as we go. So yeah, I'm going to be showing you guys a few of these items within this video to show you what they turned out, but then just keep an eye out for my next video showing you the rest of the items of how I redid them and how they turned out. And I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I do. So let's go ahead and get into the few items that I have done. All right, so I have decided just to pick three of the items. I'm doing the two pictures and the carafe. I know this video is getting a little long, so I'm just gonna jump right into it and show you guys what I did. 
I wanted to be able to paint these and the best way for me to do that is to do a textured paint. So I don't know if you know about the like cement or like textured method where you take baking soda and then whatever type of paint I have heard. It doesn't matter what kind of paint you use, whether it's chalk paint, latex, whatever. Um, what I've heard is that it works for any of them. So I took baking soda and my white chalk paint that I have and I mix them equal parts. So however much like three tables or sorry, three teaspoons of the baking soda, then I use three teaspoons of the paint. So it doesn't matter what your measurements are, um, as long as it's equal parts. And then from there, if you think it's too thick, you can always add more paint. Or if you think it's not thick enough, you can always add more of the baking soda. It's all personal preference. So I've um, got gonna be mixing that up and trying to apply that to my two vases. And then I have another um, thing that I'm going to do with the carafe. So to begin this project for any flip that you have, the first thing you want to do is start by removing any stickers, any price tags, um, and any grime that you have on it. So after removing all of the price tags on all of the pieces, I am going to clean them up. I happen to have some crud cutter that I'm going to be spraying on and just wiping off to try to get any built up, you know, grease or dirt or just other nasties that these things have accumulated over the years. Just going to give them a good scrub down and including the inside the best that I can before I get started. After I've wiped them down and they're nice and clean, we can start to paint them. Like I said, I'm going to be using the baking soda uh, mixture. So I did my equal parts baking soda to my equal parts paint. I happen to be using chalk paint. Um, I am going to get this mixed up and then start applying it to my vases. Now for the big vase that I'm working on, I don't want it to go on the inside of the vase. I just want to do the upper lip of it and then all around the edges. For the first coat on any of your pieces, it doesn't matter what you're doing, but especially if it's like the ceramic or slick surface, the first coat, it doesn't matter what it's going to look like. You're basically just getting something on it so that your next coat of paint will have something to adhere to. So because it's such a slick surface, you want to just kind of get it on. Um, for the most part, the brush strokes that you put down, you won't see too much once you go to put your second coat on. But I did, um, after kind of playing with it for a little bit, decide to do it in kind of like a an X type of, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, type of pattern, just kind of like crossing it, the brush strokes over themselves all the way through this, um, especially in on those textured peak points um, with that little detail on there just to make sure I get in those grooves really good. Um, and I just did this all over the entire base. Um, like I said, for the most part, you're just trying to get that first layer down. That way for the next um, layer of paint, you can have something to grip onto. So I did this all over the vase and then while that one was drying, I went ahead and did the small vase as well. And for the small vase, just because of the shape and the way the lines work on it, um, I went with more straight lines. I am using a chip brush because, or like, I have this old brush that it gives a lot of texture because it's old and, and dry and just has hard bristles. So that's what I'm using for, for um, both of the pictures. And so it leaves those good deep brush marks on there and brush strokes, which is what I want, which is also why the baking soda is helpful because it leaves all that fun tex texture. So again, for the small vase, I'm deciding just to do um, long brush strokes because I, and then um, vertical and horizontal brush strokes on this one because I just think it matches the shape of the vase a little better. Excuse me. And then I'm also doing um, the spout and part of the inside just because the mouth of this, the way it's shaped, you see the inside of that spout from the top. So I wanted it to all look cohesive. So I reached down as far as I could with my paintbrush and um, painted about halfway down in that into that picture and then out to the spout and then the entire thing. Now while those were drying, because you want to make sure that first coat is completely dry. You want to make sure that when you go back in with the second coat, you're not going to be moving that bottom layer around. Um, you want it to be adhered well to whatever surface that you're working on. That way you don't have to worry about it moving on you or you having weird spots where the paint didn't take. Um, so just give it plenty of time to dry. 
However, because it is so textured with that baking soda especially, but chalk paint tends to dry um, quicker anyway, so it shouldn't take too long. During that process, I'm gonna take this like terracotta looking carafe that I have, and I'm going to just do a simple white wax on it. So I'm just going to be using my Waverly white wax and a, I'm using a stencil brush actually, um, but they make wax brushes. They're honestly just stencil brushes that are bigger. Um, and I'm just going to apply this in a um, heavy amount all over this carafe. I'm going to do it in sections just because that's what works better for me. Um, I want to make sure that I get most of the wax on the high points of this carafe wiped back off without having to really scrub it too much. Um, so I'm just doing it in sections and covering it completely and then taking a, I'm just using an old t-shirt basically that I cut up and wiping that off. So I'm trying to wipe off all of the high surfaces to where the wax will stay in those crevices and pop the detail out, but without it completely taking over and letting that terracotta color come through. So I'm just gonna continue doing that all the way around. And then that one I'm gonna call good. Once I've got it all um, wiped up, I'm just gonna set it to the side and let it dry. When you're applying wax, you do wanna be careful where you're touching it because you don't want fingerprints left all in it. Um, but with this, I can just put my hand in the top of it and spin it around. Um, and for the most part, didn't have to worry about that too much. But that was a very simple, easy way to give it an update but also keep that original unique look that this has. I have not seen a piece like this before, so I wanted to stay true to its original um, character, but just help that pop out a little bit by highlighting those details with the white wax. So now that that is done and I've given the vases plenty of time to dry, I'm gonna do coat number two. With this second coat, I am going to water down my mixture just the slightest bit just a like, tiny, tiny bit because I want it to go on a little bit smoother without taking all of the texture away. Um, so I just added a tiny bit of water, mixed it up, and then I went back in. And with this um, second coat, that's where I'm gonna be a little bit more meticulous about how I'm putting the strokes on because that's gonna be my dry top layer of what you're going to see. Again, I want the texture. It gives like a cement, a faux cement texture to it. Um, and I'm just going with a cross brush um, type of technique all over this entire thing just being very careful that I know you know applying it evenly everywhere getting all of those um, details and all of the little crevices that it has and just doing the entire thing and then again setting it aside and letting it dry so they can go back with the smaller picture for the smaller picture um, if I went horizontally the first time I'm going to go vertical this time or vice versa, because like I said, I think those um, straight perpendicular lines look better with the shape of this particular vase, and that's what's pleasing to my eye, so you just need to do what what's pleasing to you or what makes you feel good inside. So I'm very excited how these are looking and turning out, so I'm just gonna finish up the vase, get it all nice and covered, make sure that it's it's good, that there's no none of the old, um, texture or the old smooth surface showing through and then give those time to dry again want it to dry thoroughly without having to worry about whether it's dry enough because I am going to do a clear wax on this just to make sure it's set it's going to take away that really chalky feeling that's going to be left on them from using the chalk paint and baking soda and also going to just kind of seal it in to make me feel a little bit better about it not just scratching off if somebody accidentally bumps it or anything. So with that, all I do is the same technique as I did with the white wax. I'm going to take my brush, put it on there. I was very, very um, thick with this when I put it on there because I wanted to make sure that I covered everything, that I didn't miss any areas that was all going to be um, cohesive and look good but also be well protected. So I slathered it on there really good into sections and then I just wiped it off with a um, microfiber um, rag which this was brand new. I probably should have rinsed it out first to make sure any like extra fibers were washed off of it and I didn't. So I did have an issue with a little bit of fibers getting in and I just got as many out as I could but just be careful with whatever you're wiping the wax off with. I know some people just use paper towels um, just so that you're not leaving any residue behind from that. But I love how all of three of these pieces turned out. Um, 
again, I'm trying not to make this video too long for you. So um, if these are the type of videos you like, I really, really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up to let me know. If you're new, subscribe to my channel. If you're returning, I hope that you know, you're enjoying these videos as much as I am making them. But I'm going to just give you guys a closer look of how these three items turned out. I will be posting next week um, a second part to this with the either the remainder of the items or um, a good portion of the items that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So let's go ahead and show you how these turned out. I love them. So I'm going to start with the like little terracotta craft thing. Um, like I said, very simple. All I did was do the white wax and the crevice, cre crevices and just highlight all the detail that was on here that you couldn't see too much. Um, I love how it like kind of got into those little tiny, tiny, tiny fine cracks that are on here. Um, I think it turned out super cute. We're just going to throw some florals in here and call it a day. The small picture is, oh, it's just so cute. My light might be too bright. There we go. Just so simple. And I feel like it'll fit in on anyone's kitchen counter, whether you want to put um, some floral in here, if you want to put your, you know, utensils, um, just some, like, you know, how I have it staged is just with some um, wooden spoons and stuff. I just painted up with some chalk paint, distressed it, and white waxed it to seal it in. They're purely for decor, just to add a little pop of color. Um, I'm going to be keeping those for my staging and everything, but just a really cute way to add a little something extra to fit into maybe your kitchen space. And then here is the big, big face. Let's see if my light's too bright. Look at the, that detail. So the textured paint, it, let me see if I can turn my light down just a little bit. There we go. So you can see that I, oh, got a little spot right here. We can fix that. Um, that it didn't take that detail of this vase away at all. It's still there, it's still vibrant, it's still, you know, but it's a little more muted. It doesn't have that high contrast that it did before because I did not, I was not a fan of that cream and that brown. Um, so you can see I didn't do the inside. I just did that top lip, but it's super cute. I love how it turned out. I don't know if you can see the detail of the, sorry guys, I'm gonna play with this light again and see if I can get so do you see all that texture that was put in onto this vase from those brush strokes? And then when I sealed it in with the white wax, it just um, took away that weird feeling that, you know, the chalky feeling from the chalk paint and just gives it a protective layer. And that way you can do the same thing with this. You can put anything you want in it. Um, I'm staging it with some florals because it's too cute to not be a vase with some beautiful spritty florals coming out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys check out some pictures of these in their final stages. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.